Section 1.1, derivatives. Now the derivatives as taught in elementary calculus is considered as the velocity or the speed of something, the rate of change. Now that concept is uh, not interesting in advanced calculus. We will define derivatives by its original definition. That's how we will think of it. A derivative of a function f is by definition, you consider this particular thing, okay? Say, if you have a point, a function f, and it has a point x at x0, the derivative of f at x0 is defined as this particular um, the quotient as x approach x0. If the limit of this thing exists as x approach x0, if this thing exists, we call this thing the derivative of f at x0. The definition of this is very important. You need to memorize this, this uh, thing. That is the meaning of the derivative, and we're going to use that frequently. This, this can also uh, be written down in a different form. It's an identical form. That is, we can also write it as f prime of x equal to f of x plus h, h me meaning the deviation. So x plus h it represents the original x here, and minus f of um, x, and the whole thing will divide by h. So if you look at this, you can tell that h is the difference between x and x0. So then, then this part becomes the x, and this, that part becomes the difference. So this, these two are uh, totally equivalent forms. Now, the reason we have two forms is because on different occasions, one form might be more useful than the other. And we'll use each one as the situation sees fit. Now, for example, let's say we do a very simple problem. Let's say we have f of x, the example, okay? Let's say f x equal to x squared. All right, now what is f prime? Now, we already know the formula for doing this kind of thing. You just uh, go by the formula and you can fall out right away. But what if we didn't know the formula? We can do it the, the hard way, fundamental way, by using this, this thing right here. So then fx, if we use this formula, then we have f, fx minus f0, x0, minus x minus x0. And we do this the hard way to demonstrate how this formula works. Well, at least uh, as an example anyway. So then you copy this whole thing down, x0 squared divided by x minus x0. And when you do the division because and factor this out, and divide and cancel out the bottom, all you have left is x plus x0. Okay, so then when you do the limit, as the limit then becomes f prime of x0, as x approaches x0, so be, be, they both become x0, so you just have 2x0. And that really is the derivative if you do it old, the old easy way, right? So you can see that the modern, the fundamental way and the easy way you learn in the past are exactly the same thing. Now the definition of a function is always have a certain interval that we're talking about. And sometimes if, if the interval is towards the end, say if function f is only defined in a certain, in a certain interval on the x-axis, okay, well the endpoints are also considered differentiable if the this particular limit works approaching x one way because f isn't even defined over here so you can't define it can't do the derivative on the other side so you just do it from one side and if the limit exists approaching one way that's good enough now the functions are, are of course not always differentiable everywhere you can have a function that's differentiable in some places and not differentiable in other places such as for example a function like this this is uh, Say if I draw this function, this is the same as the sine curve, except I reflect the bottom part on top. Okay, I define define it that way so that it, everything's differentiable except for these sharp, you know, corners. It's certainly not going to be differentiable on these things. So then, uh, so a function can be differentiable 
can be continuous but not differentiable everywhere, and yet differentiable in some spots. Now there is a theorem that says if f is if f is uh, differentiable at a certain point, then it is continuous at that point. The proof of this is actually um, an overkill proof because whenever something is dif differentiability is a very strong um, condition, whereas continuity is a much weaker condition. You can prove it um, by uh, using this particular trick is you can say, for example, first we'll write down this formula right here. So you have fx minus fx0 divided by x minus x0. And we know that this thing, this is the, this is what will become the f prime, okay? And which we know is, does exist at x0. <clears throat> So then we'll multiply, here's a trick that we're going to pull, pull just to make this uh, very easy to prove. So we'll multiply this by x0, that means we got rid of the bottom, and then we plus f x0, okay? Now what is this? This whole thing, when you do all this, you find out this whole thing equal to f of x. And what is continuity? The continuity means that the limit as x approach x0 of f of x exists. Okay, does it exist? Well, as x approach x0, this is the f prime, that's the f prime at x0, times, times this is just a zero, okay? This is a fixed value because we know what it is. So multiply together, that's zero, plus f x0, which means that's just f of x0, and that's the definition of continuity. And as you approach it, if it equals to the value itself, it's continuous. So as you can see, differentiability directly proves continuity. Now there are certain um, differentiation rules that we learn in elementary calculus, such as the product rule and the quotient rule and all that. And we'll, and the chain rule, we'll just assume that we still remember how to do that for now. And one last thing I want to mention is that is the squeeze principle. That is, if you have a fun, uh, two functions, say you have a value such that f, there's f and there's g, okay, let's, and this ex, this relationship exists for uh, a, a set um, area, and then as if if g goes to if g of x approaches a, then if g goes to a somehow, then f has to also go to a. That's an, that's an intuitively obvious argument, and it's called the squeeze principle. And we'll use that sometimes to argue um, the, the values of the limits.